Hello YouTube, today we're going to be doing an example on energy, um, typical classic uh, ramp problem when doing physics. Um, so let's just uh, take a look at this problem, see if we can work it out. Okay, so you got a 100 kilogram uh, box sitting on top of a ramp. Um, it starts moving with a, um, down the ramp and there's a coefficient of kinetic friction which is given to be 0.3. And the question is, how much work has the friction done on the block when it reaches the bottom? So, work, well, we'll get to that in a second. But first, let's define what we know. So, first thing you do, you always write down the given information. So, uh, mass of the block is uh, 100 kilograms. We got the coefficient of friction is 0.3. I'm just going to write this just because. Gravity is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're looking for work, right? Well, work is force times distance, right? In its simplest form, work is force times distance. How far has it traveled based on the uh, force um, that was applied? So, um, in this case, we're looking for how much work does the friction force do? Um, but first, let's uh, find out a little bit more about this diagram to get more pieces of this puzzle. So let's figure out how what the height is of this object here, how high is it, how high is that ramp starting from. So using your trigonom trigonometric, um, I not identities, but trigonometric uh, properties that you learned in geometry, if not sooner, uh, you will calculate the height um, simply as using the tangent operator, um, and you should know how to do that. And you'll get this value here when you punch that in your calculator, or if you can even do it by hand. Um, because tangent of 30 is, I believe, 1 over radical 3. So, yeah, that makes sense. Um, anyway, so now we got to find this distance. How far has it traveled? Remember, work is force times distance, so how far is the distance that it travels? Well, um, we're going to call that the change in delta, or the change in S. S is usually represented by position in physics, so that's kind of why we're going to use the notation. We're going to break it up simple and then put it in this. Uh, the physics notation, I guess you could say. Um, so, how do you get that? Well, you'd also do some uh, more trig, and you can figure that out. We'll show that in a second, but I kind of want to show where the delta S comes from. So, we're doing the force of the friction times the change in position, or the distance, right? So, how do you calculate that? Well, you just can do the Pythagorean theorem if you want, or even trig identity, or you can do trig. Um, plug those numbers in, um, and you'll get 10, root, 10 over root 3. Um, so, now, Let's find what the force of friction is, though. So, force of friction is mu times the normal. Uh, but what is the normal force? But uh, we'll have to look at the diagram closely some more. Um, so, pretend at that top of that little triangle there that I drew, there's the box. Um, you'll have the normal force is going directly above the box, and the, um, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So, if we draw that triangle here, like the smaller triangle, you should know this technique that theta... Um, Due to alternate interior angles and geometric properties, you'll know that the tr same angle theta that's on the base there in the picture above is also that same theta that I drew in this picture here. And you solve for that y component, um, and you'll use the cosine identity ka, for the Sokotoa for the trick in figuring out how to find that adjacent over hypotenuse is the key. Adjacent. Most well, adjacent in this case is the y component. I, many people will confuse that with sine, but remember, in this case, since theta is on the upper part rather than the lower part of the triangle, the adjacent portion is the vertical component. Um, so, the normal is usually mg, right? But we're looking for simply the um, vertical component, so that's why we use the mg cosine theta. Okay, but also, what is friction doing? It's opposing motion, so you got to make sure you put that negative sign there, which is in black. Um, and I'm simply plugging in, that's the force portion in green, times delta S, um, which is in blue. And then now we're actually going to plug in the numbers, so mu is 0.3, mass is 100 grams, gravity, oh, I forgot to put gravity in there. <laughs> so I forgot to put gravity in the equation here, but uh, the calculation I did right in my calculator, so uh, you should get 1,500 joules, so there should be a uh, Oh, but wait, real quick. It says express your answer in three significant figures, so that's 1.5 times 10 to the third joules. You might get marked off if you don't do that. Um, but right here, there should be a insert 9.81. Um, get your units in there, too, would be good. Um, and you'll get 1,500. All right, so you just figured out how much work um, or force over a certain distance uh, it takes for the block to travel down, how much uh, work is done 
from friction on the block. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's do a follow-up question. Whoop. Uh, what is the kinetic energy of the block at the bottom of the ramp? Okay, so we have uh, at the top of the ramp, the block has the most gravitational potential energy, and once it gets to the bottom, all that gravitational potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy, right? So gravitational potential energy getting converted to kinetic energy, and here are the formulas you should know. Mass times gravity times the height, um, and one-half mv squared. But we're going to need to account for friction, right? Um, so we're going to have to use that work, um, use work in our calculation. Yeah, so using work in our calculation, um, you'll get the change in kinetic energy plus the U is this case is potential energy um, time or adding the two energies together to get work. So, but we're since we're accounting for friction, um, that's why we have that work in there. So, simply solve for uh, kinetic energy since that's what we're looking for, and input the values you know. Um, so work well, we solved that in the last problem here. We just found it: 1.5 times 10 to the third, or 1,500 joules. Um, and you know the potential energy is mgh. In this case, we'll say delta y uh, to be consistent with the uh, graph or the diagram we drew above here. And uh, so that'd be 1500 minus 100 times 9.8 times delta y, uh, which we calculated here. Make sure you include that negative sign when you do the trig function there. That's important. Um, so make sure that later you'll be adding the two together, and you'll get 13. 90, or 1,390 joules. So that's how much kinetic energy it has when it reaches the bottom. So that's pretty cool. I uh, figured out how much kinetic energy is going down. You could probably figure out its speed and stuff if you wanted to. Um, but this is just the uh, energy when it gets to the bottom. So that's now it's pretty cool. Now let's do one more part here. So when it reaches the bottom, the block slides on a frictionless surface. Awesome, that's nice. Until it hits a spring. Okay compresses a distance of 50 centimeters before stopping the block. What is the spring constant? Okay, so we got this picture here again, so the block is moving and it's going to run to a spring, right? So we have kinetic energy, it's going that way on a frictionless surface, hits a spring, and then we have spring potential energy um, in the opposite direction, right? So we have kinetic energy going to potential energy, or spring potential, and we know the formulas for those as well. Um, since um, you know uh, that the uh, p spring potential energy is one half kx squared, since it will um, will be moving right. Uh, you simply set those two equal to each other um, and solve for k, right? And since we calculate kinetic energy in this problem right here, we don't need to split it up, um, which is nice. Um, so you just kind of can save a step there. So just solve for k using your algebra skills that you all uh, should know. And then plug in the numbers, right? So um, since we want k, since k is a positive number and the, kinetic, the energies are opposing motion, that's why we have the negative signs there. And then make sure instead of using 50 in your denominator for your final position, um, it's going to be in meters, right? So make sure you convert that and square it. And then you get 11,000... 100 newton meters and that's your constant okay um that's pretty much it i uh, hope that helped in terms of doing an example problem just working things out um this isn't too much of a video on how to like talk about the concepts but more of how to apply them i guess uh, so i hope this helped in terms of doing practice the more practice the better if you can find problems online keep searching uh, for more to get uh, the best you can out of the material so hope you had fun at least and good luck practicing